Hello people, welcome back. So the subject of this video is top five mistakes in building muscle mass. So the first and foremost important thing is your diet. Diet comes together with supplementation, right? I mean, you've got one which is the most important part, it's the diet itself. And then whatever you cannot get from the diet, you supplement for, right? It's not the other way around, so be careful when trying to just pump yourself up with protein powders and supplements that have a chemical nature that you don't overdo it and sort of you know kind of at the end of the day you will not be happy in 10 20 years so diet balanced diet what does that mean it's in my opinion is balance of of, of greens alkaline foods you would have greens such as dark green leaves, uh, vegetables, different kind of vegetables and stuff like that. Now, some part of the diet needs to be raw in order to overcompensate for the acidity of other foods. So for instance, I, I don't eat meat, but if you guys do, then if you have massive steak, that is quite acidic in the body. That, that's what it creates. It, it creates acidic states, which means that it decreases the pH. So you need to overcompensate for that by having some greens with this. So this is just a simple tip. Now, supplementation, again, choose your supplements wisely. Check out the ingredients, see what is there. If in 20 years, you don't want your kidney and liver failing because you've done some poor choice of supplements that you have been taking for a couple of years when you were younger. So number two is sleep. I don't care what you say, you're sleeping four or five hours a day, your body needs more to recover. If you're putting it under heavyweight training in order to build some substantial muscle mass, you need to have at least, at least six to eight hours of sleep. Some people do even more. If you can sleep more over the weekends, please do. When you go to the gym and you haven't slept enough, you will not be able to give it your best your body will start shutting down in the middle of the workout. Now you have to overcompensate with caffeine and other things. This is not the way forward. You should be in a state where your body has enough energy to, to, to survive and go through that workout in your best. So have enough sleep every day. Number three, bad posture. You see this all the time everywhere. I, I actually get it's not even funny. I mean, yeah, some of the you know gym videos are quite funny that you see on YouTube, but sometimes you, you really see people doing some crazy things, and you you think to yourself, they really gonna hurt themselves. Now you cannot just go to everyone and try to tell them that what they're doing is wrong. So sadly, some people you have to leave them doing whatever they're doing. But um, bad posture. Make sure that you always know exactly what you're doing. It's not about how much you lift. It's about the way you lift it, the posture of the exercise, the form of the exercise. So educate yourself every time about, let's say you're doing bicep curls, all right? So shoulders back, chest up. You need to have a straight back and slightly bent knees. Now, the movement does not come from the, from the jerkiness of the whole body. You don't swing your elbows and shoulders around. It should be isolated movements which you are doing. So it's not about how much you lift, but how you lift it. Number four, recovery. So that kind of ties in together with sleeping as well, but you need to establish, depending on what kind of training you are actually doing, how how long you need to recover. Sometimes if you do really heavy training with your friend or something and you go really for heavy, heavy, heavy weights, you lift, you know, kind of, you go for maximum weight, uh, trying to get one rep out of that, fantastic. But in reality, you might need probably about five days in my, my experience for the muscle to recover. So you should not, let's say you've done, you know, you've, you've done your chest. If you're doing really heavy weight, you really should rest it for at least five days until you don't really feel it's hurting anymore when you move your body around. When the, all the lactic acid is gone, when the muscle fully recovered, then 
you should train the same muscle again, not before. Another thing that is very important in my opinion is you need to get someone, if you, let's say if you start training for, I don't know, some kind of competition or anything like that, um, you're training twice a day, maybe sometimes six days a week, you need to get someone who is very knowledgeable to give you proper massage, whether it is a sports massage or some kind of deep tissue massage, you really need to make sure that you have that in place. Because by training and overtraining, your muscles are tightening. Of course, you can do exercises that lengthen them as well, but sometimes it's not enough. You might create knots and, and, and sort of stress in the muscles that needs to be released by a good massage therapist. So find someone who is really good at massages and make sure that you have massage, if not every week, every two weeks. Number five, stretching. We have all been guilty of that. I myself haven't been stretching enough. Sometimes you just don't have the time, you kind of do something before and then you don't do enough after, which is usually the problem. You can stretch before, but if you don't stretch after, you may get some kind of injuries. So make sure that you spend 10 minutes, at least 10 minutes before your workout stretching. Now you could do dynamic stretches, you could do different types of things, whatever is the stretching that fits you. And do spend another 10, 15 minutes on stretching after. You really help your muscles to, to start recovering, to lengthen them, lengthen them up and just be able to actually next time not having any reoccurring injuries, you know, shoulder tears and things like that. It really happens all the time to many, many, many people. So do stretch enough before and after. A bonus round. So something that I think is very important for everyone to think about. And this is the question is, why are you training? Whether your motivation is looking good in front of the girls on the beach, fair enough. Whether it is that it is your hobby, you love that feeling, you're doing it, or whether it is a health uh, related uh, kind of idea, just it will massively help you if you actually know why you're training. And massive um, push for you will be if you are doing it for yourself. So every time you are in the gym, you like, okay, cool, so I'm gonna train this and that, and then you, you know, come out of the gym and you feel really good and you feel really, really great, and it helps you to keep going forward. If you don't have strong enough reasons behind why am I training, you might end up like lots of people do, signing up for memberships in January and then, and then paying for them until the end of the year and they haven't been in the gym once. Or they maybe have been there once, but then everything was hurting so much that they just didn't want to come back. So I hope you find these tips helpful. Give me a shout about what you want to see in my videos. Uh, keep subscribing, uh, comment, and I shall see you next time.